Hey everyone, it's Alan Schimmel of DevOps.com and DevOps TV, and we're here at IBM Think 2018 at the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. I'm joined by a, uh, usually if there's an IBM event, this is what, your third one with yep, us now, there Ralph? Is, yep. yep, Ralph Van Beek, uh, DevOps at uh, Rabobank, and of course, that that covers a lot of sins, Ralph, right? Yep. When we say, what, why don't yeah. you share a little bit, yeah. what exactly do you do in your role? Well, what I do in my role, we decided at Rabobank that we need to professionalize the automation of the IT process in a similar way that we treat our business process. So, developing them under architecture, looking to the process, and from there making uh, the rest of your, uh, your architecture. And uh, I started with this some, some four years uh, ago. Uh, primarily focusing on the, the payments area within the, the Rabble Bank, which is some 70% Z, 30% uh, distributed platforms, mm -hmm. uh, and well, trying to meld this together as one integrated and automated process. Sure. And, and Ralph, over the last, well, this, as I said, is the third year, but in the last two years, we've we've spoken a lot about Rabobank and the transformation and what was driving it and stuff like that. But I wanted to focus this year's talk, if we can, uh, to a, a little bit about um, mainframes and how, you know, the shift left that we see in, in, in you know, cloud-based DevOps, let's say, mm. uh, is a little bit different with mainframes. The idea of testing and so forth. Also, a little bit different with, with mainframes. And, you know, for those of you listening and watching, make no mistake about it, the financial industry still runs on mainframes, right? That it is, yep. And it's not going to change anytime soon. So let, let's talk a little bit, and obviously you can't talk about things you, can, you can't talk about, right? Mm -hmm. But let's give our, our viewers a, a little background mm -hmm. into DevOps, mainframes, Testing, shift left, Rabobank. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, uh, thanks. Um, to start with, um, we are dedicated to go full DevOps, uh, mm -hmm. automate everything where it is uh, possible. There's a big business need for uh, for that. I mean, our customers are driving us to come with uh, new services. We've got the fintech uh, movement and things like uh, like that, and that also hits uh, the mainframe. So we need to speed up. We need to be more. Uh, agile. Um, so we started to um, to adopt most of the uh, the mantras from uh, from DevOps, also applying them to uh, to the mainframe. And at one point, when it is regarding to testing, we found out that you run into challenges. Mm -hmm. um, if you look to the typical architecture of mainframe applications, and perhaps I shouldn't say mainframe applications, but it's more about transaction processing uh, systems. They have an architecture which is uh, designed for stability, it's de designed for scalability, for consistency of, uh, of data. This leads to an architecture which is much more integrated. So now the DevOps mantra says you should modularize smaller chunks uh, of functionality, test it individ individually. And we found out that, well, although we are striving for that, we still end up with a considerable amount of end-to-end -end tests that is basically inev inevitable mm -hmm. due to the architecture of the uh, the application. Uh, now, that's not typically mainframe. It has to do with the transaction processing nature. Uh, but as these transaction processing uh, applications usually uh, tend to run on mainframe, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, yeah becoming an impediment for going full, uh, sure. full automated. So yeah, and. And so, Ralph, what what has been the the approach at Rabobank with this? Um, it's it, it's a couple of components. To start with, try uh, to avoid end-to-end -end tests as much as possible. That's that still stays. But then, at the point that you do have a need for end-to-end -end tests, and that can be due to the architecture, but also to the to the related risk, um, we try to shorten them as much as possible. So not trying to have full copies of the, uh, the entire co uh, company application landscape, but then focus them. So there's a lot of to do with uh, virtualization of services. The second uh, big chunk is about having consistent data in these, uh, in these environments, which is 
something that we do with uh, with a couple of IBM products, which is it's Optum, it's uh, it's Hades, it's uh, it's Data Stage, mm -hmm. um, and we have set up uh, a capability, a test data uh, fabrication uh, process, where we, in an industri industrialized manner, um, supply consistent end-to-end -end testing data. Now, together with the story of last year, which is about application uh, deployment, and then having an organization around that, uh, means that we are now in a situation that we have dramatically improved our capability in uh, in end-to-end -end testing. I mean, uh, I've spoken to customers or to other IBM customers here uh, uh, over the last uh, over the last day, spending over a month for an end-to-end -end test. Yeah. We are now have a single end-to-end -end test environment where we run 60 end-to-end -end tests a month, each month. Uh, high scale, we're using RIT for uh, high performance uh, mm -hmm. virtualization, doing some 200 million uh, wow. virtualizations each, uh, each month. So this is, I, I mean, 60 tests a month may sound small, but we are talking about end-to-end -end tests. Yeah, when you're talking about end-to-end, -end, uh, and, yeah. and for our listeners, let, let's be clear about mm -hmm. that. We're not just talking about running a a test on a n on a new snippet of code. You're talking about end-to-end -end test on enterprise level applications. Exactly. Yeah. You know that are on both you know, systems of engagement, system of record. So th this is this is not an easy under. I no. mean, you know, in the old way of doing things, this would take weeks, if not months, right, to yep. to do. Th that kind of test on an app. It, it is, it is, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's uh, one of the things we found out is, uh, if you look to the steps you take in automation, automating the provisioning of uh, your, your infrastructure, then automating the deployment of your application, that all doesn't make sense if after that I still need six to eight weeks to completely configure my environment. So if sure. that's still all old style craftsmanship work, um, <coughs> You will never get to the agility that you uh, th 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 what that your customers basically demand from you. Absolutely. So, Ralph, let let's um, if you don't mind, you've been to these IBM conferences now for a number of years. You speak to other uh, uh, practitioners, organizations mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. have representatives here. This year, we're seeing a little. Maybe it's a little different in the way it's organized mm -hmm. around around how we're doing. You know, this, when we talk about DevOps, we talk about automation, we talk about testing, uh, continuous type of stuff. And we're seeing it sort of, my take, we're seeing this sort of, these ideas being embedded, if you will, into artificial intelligence, uh, uh, security uh, business in general, yeah. right? So it, it's not just where in years past it was almost doing DevOps for DevOps sake. Mm -hmm. Now it's about, hey, you use these DevOps means, these ways of yeah. you know, that we call DevOps as, a, as part of what you're doing yeah. you know, in a bigger arc, yeah. which is business processes, yeah. right? Yeah. And and so I wonder, like here you are, right? You're director of DevOps or at, at the bank. How does that fit in now in this new kind of way that we look at, you know, business? Yep. Um, well, it's if I l just look to my agenda over the last couple of weeks, you mm -hmm. can, can see that same uh, happening. DevOps is more or less uh, becoming the natural way of doing things, but it also means that it uh, is much mo is more and more integrated yes. with other common practices. I think over the last weeks I spent uh, quite some time on GDPR and, and, and the entire... You're uh, not the only one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure, but the, the challenge now is how to get all this security uh, with how to, to safeguard your data and at the same time not hitting all the advantages that you had in automating your yes. testing process. Because to some level extent, you need to have production-like uh, data. I'm not yeah. saying production data, production-like data. Uh, so that's already one challenge. But the o another challenge, uh, if it is about the AI, uh, that's one of the main topics here. Uh, um, 
we are exploring ideas of how can we now, uh, in, in the initial stage of testing, use AI to define our test criteria, to, def to, to, to distill requirements from the business processes into what do we now right. have to, to test, which is still, I, I mean, design, application design is still rather... More uh, art than science. <laughs> yeah, but also uh, not really integrated with the, the automation of no, the rest of the process. No, no, absolutely not. No. I, I want to just, because you know, some of our listeners at home may not realize how big a thing you brought up, mm -hmm. and that is this idea of how GDPR affects test data. Yep. Right, because it used to be prior, well, GDPR doesn't come into effect until May 23rd May or May 25th. 25th. Yeah. Yeah, yep. May 25th. Um, it used to be you can grab subsets of your own data yep. and run tests on that, yep. right, to make sure that it, it worked and so yep. forth. Under GDPR, you got to be careful doing that, right? That could be a huge violation. Yep. 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 And, and that data is real, subject to GDPR. If something happens, I mean, yep. the, the fines here are you know, yeah, they, they punitive. They, 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 they really are. Yeah. yeah, they could, yep. you know. I mean, we see it in our own stuff. So the idea now of coming up with viable test data that mm -hmm. is pseudo-realistic mm -hmm. has become a challenge yep. for many organizations, or yep. will become a challenge yep. for yep. many organizations as, as you know, we move forward in, in GDPR. Um, Ralph, any other, I mean, it's only one day here, and to think any other sort of... Uh, observations or kind of eureka moments that came to mind in talking to people? Well, I, I, I'm looking a lot at uh, uh, cloud uh, developments. Um, one of the challenges that I see is how to, to combine uh, cloud for z together with this, this challenge of all these test environments. You have these test environments that are populated, that are a nest in itself, and so Here's cloud, you want to spin up, spin down your environment, and here's your test environment with a lot of investment in it, and, and, and you don't want to, to, get, uh, uh, to get that w away. Right. There's tension between those, uh, those two, and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, for, for solutions for that and to see how can we just combine, because they, they are both great concepts. They're both great concepts, and they can both help each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the trick, as you said, is, is <laughs> Instead of doing this, doing this, right? Yep. Yep. And so, wouldn't it be great to leverage the elasticity of the cloud, right, for for testing uh, scalability, hmm. while still using this, not only the infrastructure, but the know-how, the the whole process, the whole you know, our yep. whole way of doing business. We don't have to throw that out. You don't want to yep. throw that baby with the bathwater. Can we just leverage <laughs> right yep. here yep. to make this better? Yep. Yeah. Of course, well, devil's I in the details there. I, I, I think the nice thing about uh, this cloud movement is, is it more or less forces you, it triggers you to, to do your homework. Uh, yeah. So if you ha haven't got your, the management of your environments well in place, to, and I mean with management, I'm not talking about the infrastructure as such, but the entire pillar from right. infrastructure application and your en entire uh, set of testware. Um, then it will hinder you. You will you won't be cloud ready enough to just make that right that step. to do. Yeah. But and what you just described there, Ralph, it really goes to the nitty gritty, the heart of what we call hybrid cloud. Yep. Right. Yep. Which is leveraging cloud without throwing out years and millions, if not billions of dollars in investment we've made yep. in our infrastructure. You know, I, re I remember being here, I, I guess it was three years ago, interviewing a major client of IBM who was moving to the cloud. And what they were doing is, as they would turn on a service mm. in the cloud, they would just shut down the service on-prem. Mm. Seemed, I mean, very radical approach, mm. uh, incredibly wasteful. Yep. Right. How do you throw out? In this case, it was fifty years for them of yep. of stuff to start with a green field here. Right. Yep. It just doesn't seem it doesn't seem natural. Right. I, <laughs> I I I I see this. So I live in Florida, as you know. When they redo the landscaping, they chop down beautiful thirty, forty, fifty year old trees. They mm. just chop them down. 
and replace them with new trees that'll yeah. grow. Why would you chop down a tree? Yeah. That, and well, it's the same thing well, here. Uh, 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 apart from that, uh, a lot of these old stuff, these, these things uh, evolved over time with very good reasons. There's yeah. a lot of thinking uh, in that, uh, and, and, and the, the way things are set up is usually for very good uh, reasons. So it's, it's not wrong to chop down a tree once in a while when it's in Needs the middle of the road, right. but uh, at, at the same time, you should make conscious decisions on, uh, on that. You know, but sometimes, Ralph, I think to myself, you know, Alan, are you getting old? <laughs> is, is, is well, we have the same yeah. color of hair. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. But is, is this the new way of mm. out with the old, in with the new? And, and these legacy, look, we're, mm. you know, some of these people think mainframes are legacy, mm. but that's their problem. But, you know, do we put too much... Uh, investment into preserving these legacy things just because they worked then. Yeah, well, uh, getting to my initial message, I think there's a lot of misconception in, 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 this, in, in this. If you talk to the, well, uh, mainframes are giving uh, bad names, so right. uh, it's monolith, it's, it's, it's legacy, etc. Et but again, we redesigned our payment systems mm -hmm. completely greenfield. I remember. S started to rebuild them on mainframe uh, with, with, with Cobol, with a brand new architecture, but because of consistency, because of performance, because of scalability, we ended up with an architecture which was much more modularized, but still the, f the very core of processing still had the same uh, monolith characteristics, not because it's an old fashioned way of designing, but because it's it a pre prerequisite to be this performant and this... Uh, it was the best solution. Yep. I mean, that, and that's another thing I think we lose a lot of times when we, in, especially in technology and mm -hmm. IT, where we're always, we suffer from a, you know, shiny trinket syndrome, we always want the hot new thing, yep. is that just because there's a hot new thing doesn't mean the old thing was necessarily all bad, mm -hmm. right? And, and like everything else in life, it's about finding the balance. Right, yeah. of, of how do you leverage that. So anyway, I'm glad to see you, you know, you, you are, you're on the front lines of this at Rabobank and you do a great <laughs> job with it. Thanks so much for being our guest here today. Pleasure to be here. Enjoy again. the rest of Think. Okay. Thank Ralph Van Beek, uh, Rabobank here at uh, IBM Think 2018. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV. Have a great day. <laughs>